say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. Cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mrs. Farmer, what are you doing here? I smelt food cooking. Did you did you show up today? Just today. You're kind of here all the time, aren't I you? Am. If there's food, I'm here. <laughs> you know what? We were trying to figure out what to do for the show, and we don't do this like, okay, what are we going to do for the show? What we have for dinner and what we do for the show is the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, in all reality. This is a non-scripted show. I didn't know. Sometimes I don't know up until that day what we're going to have. So we got to digging through the freezer. That's right. Looking for one particular thing that I really wanted, which was Moe's ribeyes. We had those last night. Oh, my. Yum. And now we're thinking about, okay, I was digging through there and seeing all that wonderful, beautiful beef that we raised. Right. We know where it came from. So I started looking at a particular piece of meat, and I started thinking, Okay, how can I take something that you can get on the market for four to five dollars a pound? That's what it is, yeah. And turn it into something that tastes like it ought to be twenty dollars a pound. I know how to do that. I know you do. <laughs> and I'll tell you what we're gonna do. This is a top sirloin roast. So the thing that happens a lot when you overcook a roast or you cook it at too high a temperature for too long, it becomes tough. Right. If you slow cook this and let that, and have it room temperature to start out with, that's in the beginning, that's something you, you have to do. And you put the right flavors on here and cook it about 325 until it gets that internal temperature that we like, which is roughly 130. Pretty rare. 135, pretty rare. You can make that taste like prime rib. That sounds good to me. Now, it's not going to be the same consistency, mm -hmm. but now we got a little bit of an unfair advantage because that's Mo, that's and we raised our calf to be almost 700 pounds instead of 1,200 pounds. Now, that's something I will do again. Now, frankly, a lot of people say, oh, he's talking about his cow. Yes, we are. That's a cow. No apologies for Best that. Best meat we've ever that's, had. That's, that's <laughs> the way we're going to do it from here on out. What does it take? When you're sitting in a restaurant and you're having prime rib, if you like prime rib, there's something years ago that jumped out at me because Raul said here smell this smell this mm -hmm. smell this I'm like that's different what do you what do you taste in your prime rib what I mean what do you what's the first thing you taste when you taste it salt pepper and garlic your salt three pepper basic. and garlic mm -hmm. and that's that's the first thing that jumps out but then there's the more subtle thing that comes out that I found over time is rosemary and thyme especially yeah. the thyme mm -hmm. all right so I've got my skillet heating up if you'll give me some olive oil let's go ahead and get us a hot skillet and this is going to be just quick and easy. We're going to warm this up because we're going to brown this. Now that's going to start the cooking process. That's going to get everything real warm on the outside. That's not a real thick piece of meat. So if you do not have a meat thermometer in your kitchen, is that not something really wonderful to have? Yeah. To let you know how things are coming along? Now I don't want some big old pieces of honking rosemary. So if you will, go ahead and strip the leaves off just like you'd take them off normally. Right. And then we're going to cut that up real fine. And the same with our time. If you'll take some of this time, look, I got all kinds of time on my hands. Now that I'm just in every day. Now, what I always do is keep salt, pepper, and garlic around. And usually with this mixture, I'll go a little heavy on the on the salt. And that depends on what your doctor's orders are. I'm gonna go fairly heavy on this seasoning. And if you wanted to, you could do this an hour ahead of time, let it set, let it really sink in. I've got some extra fresh ground pepper right here, some big stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the outside because yeah. that, that's fresh. All right, so this is the fat side coming up. Now, if you remember our show that we did not too long ago that's 
very shortly going to be pushing a million views. I think we're up in the mid 800,000 views on how to butcher a cow. If you remember that, then you're going to remember where the sirloin tip roast came from. Now, this is a good cut of meat. Look at all that fat. Yeah. Does that bother me that it's got all kinds of fat on it? No. Mm -hmm. What does that do? That imparts that flavor. And what it's also going to do is when we brown this at a high temperature, it's going to have a little runoff, and we're going to use that. We're going to put that back in our au jus, which is going to be bottom. Now, not too long ago, we did a standing rib roast. This is about the same thing, but we're taking a four and a half dollar pound piece of meat, piece of meat per pound, yeah, and turn it into something special. All right, our oil is hot. I'm going to start on the fat side down. Yum. And I'm going to let that go for a minute. All right, because we can, I'm going to put some of this large ground pepper on here because, oh, that just adds so much flavor. That's that crust a lot of times that you taste. And we're going to take it a step further in a little while. I'd say we're about there. Oh, Look yum. at that. Now, whatever comes off of this, mm. we're not wasting. We're going to put in this pan right here that we're going to cook it in. Now, we do have our oven preheating to 325, or we could just eat it right out of the I could eat that like that. <laughs> I know you could. <laughs> I'm gonna let that go brown on the other side, and I'm gonna turn it on the side real quick, and I'm gonna seal all that moisture in okay. as best I can. So this is almost exactly five pounds. Now we're gonna have company tonight. Nick, Victoria's out, Kelly's always here to help us eat. And we're gonna have enough for everybody. This is five pounds, okay? And we've had volunteers so, to help us eat. Yeah, we've <laughs> never seen that problems. We don't have a lot of leftovers. Yeah. And if there is, wow! Look at that. Yeah. That, now listen, I don't want this to go too long, because like I said, that's already cooked. We can eat it. And I want that inside to be rare. Now we're gonna do one more thing. You mind if I use your cutting board there? Uh -huh. Go ahead. I'm gonna smack this right up over top of here. Now what are we gonna do? There's one last step. I'm gonna cook it fat side up as usual. Okay. Now you've got me some thyme and rosemary chopped up, and smaller pieces. I'm gonna take a cup of beef broth. I'll tell you what, pour me a glass of red wine. Okay, one cup? And or how much yes, this is, a, I don't know if it's a Pinot Noir or a Cabernet, it doesn't matter, any kind of nice red wine. This is gonna be our fancy schmancy, wonderful au tasting au jus. I'll tell you what let's do. Just to make sure, at that temperature, I don't think that's all gonna go, but I wanna, I wanna make sure we got plenty of stuff. Let's get a little bit more beef broth and put in there. Okay. Let's go two cups on that. I'm gonna take a little more salt, pepper, and garlic. Yum. Season that. All right, so we've got adequate liquid in there. I'm gonna take what came off of here. We'll, we'll use this yeah. lodge pan again yeah. later because we got more to cook. Okay, last and final step. Pardon me, Mrs. Farmer, but do you have any gray poop on? Yes, I do. What's the thing you spoke? <laughs> what do they always say when they- But of course. But of course, that's right, but of course. When we did this not course. too long ago, that's so right. we still have some left. <laughs> I'm gonna take my gray poop on. In fact, yeah. I tell you what, I'm gonna keep adding it. We keep spreading it until we figure we got enough. That's gonna add an extra yeah. Oh, yeah. delight. But then it also provides me a surface for this to stick. You see what I'm saying? I like where you're going you with this. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Mrs. Farmer, if you will flip that over for me. Already? Is that not beautiful? Look at that. It is. Just look at that. Wow. You know where we're going? I do. Same deal, if you don't mind spreading that out for me. Wow, that looks pretty. Now look at that. Is that I not like beautiful? It. What it about beautiful. just a little bit more crisp? I think pepper's wonderful. All right, if you don't mind, if you can plant that in here. Oven's preheated to 325. i tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna check that in an hour. Okay. With a meat thermometer, just to see where it's at. Look at that. I'm excited. Just, <laughs> you know, when it looks good too, I mean, it just makes it me excited. It already looks good. Yeah. All right, let's pop that in. You know, a lot of people, I don't know if they know how, how Brussels sprouts grow. Of course, this, I love this that. is the main part of it. Does that look, look like some kind of Amazon it does. war? <laughs> Musical instrument? Yeah. It looks like a decoration to me. I like that it. That is how it's really grown. Now, when we grow them in our garden, that they, they typically don't get this big. And that nice. Before the worms get to them. But that is what Brussels sprouts should look like. Is that not cool? I love it. Little baby heads and cabbages. Ones. So, now, here's what we're going to do is we're going to take these. And you blanch those just a little bit. I did blanch them, right. And I'm gonna slice them. Some people do them whole, but I'm gonna put them in little slices here. 
You get them a little bit. Now you don't have to do that. If you like yours with more uh, crispy. All right. But these are going in the oven, right? They're going in the oven. We are actually going to roast them. If you haven't tried Brussels sprouts in a while and you think, ew, let me tell you what. They're delicious. They are yummy. They're good for you. Well, most people, if you look, what most people do is olive oil, salt, and pepper. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And they just, and they just roast them. Right, like just roast, roast it with vegetables. that. But you know us, we always have to add a little bit. And you had some great ideas. I wanted some almond slivers. Mm -hmm. You talked about water chestnuts, so we're going to add that. And also some bacon and bacon grease. We'll do some olive oil here. And if you got, right. there's some bacon grease behind you that I actually okay. fried some bacon a little while ago. Put some of that on there also. Just a little bit yeah. for taste. My mom used to use bacon grease and everything. On everything. Tell me when. What do you think? I We're think that's good. Perfect. Just a little toss around a little bit. Right. Got that. That's, again, that's our bacon. Salt and pepper and Salt, garlic. Salt pepper and mixture. garlic, which like I always that. keep mixed up. All right. Thank you. And I got some almond slivers here, just because. Of... That adds such a nice yeah. little texture. They're so sweet. Have you tried them? Mm. They are delicious. Almonds are really good for you. Yes, they are. And then water chestnuts. Bought some of these already sliced, but I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller here for us. Those are always nice. And nice crunchy. consistency. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, if you do cook them a little bit, uh, don't go too much because they'll lose, you know, they'll get real mushy. Yeah. So just, that was just enough to put a little softness on them. And we're going to salt and pepper them again, I think, and we'll make sure we got enough, right. got enough oil, maybe a little more olive oil, just kind of get those mm -hmm. all nice and wet for us here. Yum. Yeah. That's simple. I know what that tastes like. And so that's at 400 degrees for... 400 degrees for probably about 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Yeah, until they get nice and brown. And if you have a pan right over there beside you, we're going to... All right. Oh, you know, one more thing that, you know... Make it delicious. That, that you just reminded me about is we do have our bacon. Got to have some of that. Right there. And why wouldn't you put a little bit of on top of yeah. that? There's no earthly reason why we shouldn't. I think we should. Put a couple little pieces. And if you hear a chainsaw in the background, not too long ago you saw the... The massacre of our ash tree population by a little old bug it's has awful. killed, I don't know, probably 30% of our hardwoods here were ash. So Nick's hard at work still cutting trees so down. So you're going to have to feed them. I'm going to have to feed them. No choice. We're at a stopping point here right now. So let's go visit with Murphy. Now, okay. Murphy, you have to know your dog and you have to kind of know some dogs are way ahead of others, some dogs are way behind others. And I'm not saying they're smarter. Oh, yeah, some of them are smarter than others. So, He's sharp. Yes, he's he smart. We already know that most border collars are. But he's too, you know, he's right. too happy. He wants to love everybody. I'm not going to discourage that. Right. But what I'm going to do, and the one thing that I'm going to do with him today, is when I take him out, I'm always going to leave that big long lead on him, and I'm not going to do any training today. Okay. Now I did that last time, that lie down, just to see right. where he's at, and he went to lay on his bed. He got it. He understood he was supposed to go down, but I want him to understand he lays on his belly. He's not refined and he hasn't got that look in his eye like what do you want you know what i'm talking right, about right you've seen me train bird mm -hmm. dogs yes i have when they get that look like they're looking at you like you're looking at me they're smart right they know so when he realizes that he's going to have a job and when he realizes that he's going out now to lollygag that's fun for him last right. time it was training so he understood that he wanted something he didn't quite get it this time it's just fun but he's going to be on that long leash and we'll see that here in a minute. So I'm also going to visit with our little baby to make sure, right. his, sure his legs doing okay. doing okay. And then we're going to come back with a final, final yummy. It's almost overload. And you, you loved it when we made it earlier. It's almost overload. Yes, it is overload. You think you can handle it? I think. If you'll let me eat some this time. I probably will. Okay. <laughs> but I'm telling you, the duck fat and potatoes, forget about yep. it. All right, let's go take a look. What are you doing? You better go see your mommy. You better go see your mommy. Now today, no commands. Like I said, he's a little young. He's having too much fun. And this is a chance for him to get out of his place that he normally is. Just enjoying himself. He's only four and a half months old, yeah. baby. Murphy, yeah. come here. Now, why have I got the cord on? Because you just hollered at him and he wasn't paying attention. So I gave him a gentle tug. Yeah. So he knows he's free. To some extent, but right. he knows we've still got the cord. And that's the whole thing about dog training. I gotta be in control, but he's gotta be having fun. And that's sometimes a hard balance to keep, but there's one little trick that you can do. Let him get out and explore, but only so much. He's gonna want a job shortly. I came up here earlier today to check on my bees 
It was, and we haven't had much of a winter. Nice today. They are packing pollen in. Now here's what I have learned. I have seasonal allergies, which is kind of funny for the outdoor guy, but that's why we have our own honey. I think it helps. I started to notice with my seasonal allergies, late February, early March was one of my roughest times. They are packing it in. I don't know where they're getting it. I'm gonna have to check and see what they're hitting right now. But they are bringing stuff home. They got the groceries. So it looks like our hive has made it, hopefully, through the winter. It looks like they're healthy, and later on I'll crack it open when it gets nice and warm. But they are packing in the pollen, and my eyes are itching. So there's a correlation we can all talk about. Well, look who's healing up. You can barely catch him. He's starting to put weight on that. Yeah. And the other day when we changed the bandages out, it's already starting. It's amazing. Of course, they're on a yeah. calcium-rich diet right now. It's amazing how quick these little guys heal up. He's getting heavy. He's growing. Yeah, he's getting there. Let's put him back up. He's probably one. I'll up. listen to Mama. What do you think? It's shaping up? I like it. It's like you're making a part for us? Sort of. Possibly. Now, I like as it. you look around, you see that Nick and I have cut trees down. The really ash trees have. have to go. And as we cut stuff down, we're kind of pushing. I mean, this was, you couldn't walk through this. This, this really was good. briars and so on and so forth. So what are we going to do? You see, I'm leaving a lot of the, a lot of these little weedy things. I'm going to let them go. Now, when spring rolls around, which is shortly, right. all kinds of green stuff's going to be popping through here. Now, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm leaving my hardwoods, as you can see. Right. The ones that aren't ash and aren't dead because it's beautiful. But does that mean we can't have pasture for our sheep? So you can bring the sheep up here. That'd be Let's great. Let's show you a picture. We may have shown this on the show before, but here's what I want to show you. We had one little area over behind the old chicken coop right? that we wanted to clean out <laughs> because it was just so thick it and was. raccoons were coming in and out of there and that was their travel path. Right. Here's day two. No kidding. <laughs> Look at what five or six or seven sheep will do to this particular area. And I don't mind them a bit coming in here and doing that same some thing. Cleanup. So being that we have this move, movable fence, which is charged by a battery, right. I could take two sections of those, put in here, shake a bucket of feed, and they come in here and eat. walk them in here, and they can get their belly full of the most wonderful stuff. They love the junk scrub. Oh yeah, they and, do. And all the grasses and everything will be coming up in here and all the, all the weeds. And then when they get all cleaned up, we can have the the new Nikki Park. Oh, thank you. Is the, the walking name it? with a with a walking trail that <laughs> okay. I already created by the I like that by the Bobcat. I like it. So, some of this stuff right here, which you think, well, oh, it's pretty, it's good for squirrel hunting, so on and so forth. It's also good to bring your fence up, let your sheep or goats in, and man, they will go to town. Speaking of going to town, we better go check our beef I'm because hungry. it's about time. Let's okay. go check. All right, we're gonna check the temperature and see what's going on with the meat because I do not want it to get overdone. I do right. not. And then we're gonna come back and just thinking about it makes my mouth seriously water. This last little thing, everybody makes some version of a potato pancake. Right. But uh, we went to Malone's recently and I just gotta tell you, they got, I don't know what they call it, a potato croquet or whatever. It's delicious. It's absolutely wonderful. So we're gonna do our version of that. And we came up with this little guy. We tried him a little while ago. You ate the whole thing. I'd like one this time. We can arrange that. Okay. But, you know, the first one we tried in just regular grease, this is in duck fat. That'll be delicious. That's what I'm talking about. Let's check the temperature real quick. Wow. We're almost there. Okay, I tell you what I'm going to do, Nikki. I'm going to get my... Oh, it's already warm. It's from duck fat? This is duck fat. Rendered duck fat. Now, these are something... You know, we always use red skins. I don't know why. Right. You like I them, like I the like them. I like the skins on them, right. You left the skin on them, same thing that's going on here. Tell us tell us what we're doing here today. Just some mashed potatoes, and I put them in the fridge, and you know how you have extra mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. something to do with them. And I always put just sour cream and butter. Sometimes we put horseradish, we put all kinds. This time, just sour cream and butter mm -hmm. and a little bit of cream. All right. And we are gonna make us some cakes. Give us an overview of what you're gonna do from here on out. All right, well, first of all, I have some, I brought some frozen hash browns, and I've let them gotcha. kind of thaw. And I'm gonna, we're just gonna make one here. I'm gonna chop those up a little first. And that's going to be our outside yeah. layer. It's, it's kind of got a structure to right. it. Right. And I got some cheese. There's some supposed, cheese. It's going to be, I'm going to pat them in this little bit of oh, cheese. Oh, going to be terrible. I know it. All right. I am going to get me some onion. And I'm just going to shave some of this on here. A little bit of onion pieces too. What do you think? 
What do you think? Now I'm gonna make me, I'm just gonna get messy here. All right. Make me a little potato patty. I'm just gonna roll it in this. Then a little salt and pepper and garlic. And I thought, you know what? So everybody yeah. has them at a uniform size. Do they side too? Thank you. We'll take our little canning. Pork our fancy canning cutter. Lid. Just cut those outside edges off. So they'll all match. Is that what you're mm -hmm. wanting? All righty. Oh, look at that. And our oil's almost at the perfect temperature. You ready? Yep. Let's drop it carefully. Yum. Oh my. That's not Crisco. It's not even lard. That is duck fat. That is rendered duck fat. Right, you know what time it is? Oh, we gotta get that out of the oven. Okay. And then we're gonna let it set with covered for about 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna cover this and let it set about 15, maybe 20 minutes, because those juices are still flowing in there. And it's gonna maintain that heat in there. All right. All right, would you do me a favor, mm -hmm. Mrs. Farmer? Look at that beautiful piece of meat right there. I love it. That's a roast that we turn into more of like a steak type thing. Pour me some juice in here. We're going to see where we're at taste-wise on that. Do you want all this? Uh, yeah, we got, got we quite got a few people. Today. So let's do it all. Everybody can have their own little bucket of au jus. Now here's where we come in and we say, okay, let's see where do we start. How is it? It's already really good. But what we're going to do to finish it up so I'm gonna take a little bit of this. It's called Better Than Bullion. You've seen me use this before. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see us on occasion repeating some stuff or doing maybe just a little bit different every now and then. But we're gonna put a little bit of that in there just for the salt. That in itself, that au jus right there is about ready to go. If you didn't want to do anything else, you could stop right there. But we're gonna take, and because it's room temperature, we're gonna yeah. take some we're gonna, I like it a little bit of sweet in there. I don't like it all salty. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do, we could add a little more bouillon if we wanted. We could crush some of that. Let's do, let's do say one of these. I've already got it where it needs to be. So okay. let's just take one bouillon cube and to get it to cook in there quicker, we just bust it up a bit. That gives it that nice rich flavor. I'm gonna put a little, just a tiny bit of red wine in here. Yeah. And then we're gonna crank this up and reduce it down just a hair to let that sweet get in there. And we just pulled out our Brussels sprouts. Looky there. Does they that taste good. I wonderful? tried one. It's delicious. All right, we're going to let that go just a little bit. Reduce it down just a hair. Let it thicken up. Let those sugars break down from that jelly. Let's start Let's start right about here and see what, let's right just middle? slice and see what it looks like in the middle. Because I was reading, I let it set it a little longer than I meant to. Oh, oh wow. My. Oh my goodness. Now look at that. Turn around to the camera. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Look at that. Mm. Now, does that not look like that looks delicious. a piece of prime rib? <laughs> All right, now you look at that plate. Now, again, that's a sirloin tip <laughs> roast, but what have we right. done with it? We've turned it into something special. That's, that's, delicious. Like, that's like, like turning a chicken into an eagle. Dipping in our little au jus there. <laughs> Prime rib. That's good. Mm. You sure you want to share with the kids? Just eat it all. No, let's act like we have to eat it all from the show. Yeah. Just, just keep them out there. They don't need anything. Oh, my. That's delicious. That's amazing. Mm. Now, I got the internal temperature up to about 125. That's the way we like it. Right. When it sat in there, it got up to about 135. A little... We actually prefer it rarer than that, but that right there, I think it's perfect. Is tremendous. Mm -hmm. So again, we took that five dollar a pound down. It can go as low as what three nine nine four, and we turned that into something that tastes like something expensive. And if you would like more recipes from our kitchen, where would you go? I always go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com for all my recipes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know what happens is, is we have never measured anything in our lives. And once people start asking, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com to find all those recipes that we have out mm -hmm. there. Also, if you haven't joined our Facebook page, we want you as our Facebook friend and family. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, we talk on there with folks all the time. And it's almost time to turn that camera off. I'm ready. And just <laughs> dive in because this is ridiculous. So it's all about. Good times. Good friends. Good eats. It's time to saw that thing up.
To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, 